Hi everyone, this is Dr. Esther Peterson and I'm back with another episode of What the Floss? So today I wanted to talk about the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Has anybody else watched the New Heights podcast yet today? Travis and Jason Kelsey were talking about the Nebraska Cornhuskers and how they're going to play at Arrowhead Stadium. They're going to be the opening game for the college football season in August. And of course, I bought my tickets, but don't tell my kids. Okay, so I'm repping my Nebraska gear. So I'm a Nebraska grad. In addition to those letters behind my name, my DDS, my original letter behind my name came from Nebraska. And um, I am a Cornhusker through and through. I bleed Cornhusker red. And I just wanted to share with you a little bit today about stuff that I've learned with my Cornhusker training and how it applies to dentistry, how it can apply to your life. I've heard some people ask me lately, I actually had a friend text me uh, a, an Instagram video of a gentleman talking about root canals. And so I wanted to tell you today everything that I know about root canals, because maybe you need one, maybe you've been told you need one, maybe you've already had one, or you know of somebody in your family or in your, in your life that um, might need a root canal or is considering a root canal. So let's kind of start from the beginning. A tooth is built like a peanut M&M. So a tooth has three different layers to it. So imagine the outer candy coating of a peanut M&M. That is analogous to your enamel. Enamel is the white stuff that you can see in your mouth, right? All that white that's covering your teeth hardest substance in your body. When you're long gone, your enamel will still be there. So as long as you take care of it. The second layer to that peanut M&M is that milk chocolate. And that milk chocolate layer that's analogous to a tooth is called the dentin. It's that softer inner part of the tooth. So when you have tooth sensitivity, that's what you're feeling, that, that dentin is being triggered, that the uh, nerve endings in that softer inner part of the tooth are being triggered. And that's what causes uh, cold sensitivity, sweet sensitivity. So that's that mi milk chocolate layer of the tooth. In the very center of the tooth where the peanut would be in an M&M is the nerve and blood vessel chamber. And imagine that peanut having legs that go all the way down and outside the candy coating. That is what a root looks like in a tooth. So that pulp chamber, that root has nerves and blood vessels that give nutrients and feeling to the tooth itself. When a root canal is needed, that means either the nerve has been injured so much that it's gotten so inflamed that it becomes painful and hurting, or it's become infected so much that you start to get swelling outside of your jaw um, in your cheek. You've probably seen on movies when someone has like a big knot in their jaw and they go, oh, I'm going to the dentist for a root canal and it's always dump, 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 I need a root canal. Well, kind of over Overall, a root canal these days is not what it used to be even 10 years ago. The technology is that much more advanced where we can actually use lasers and a non-surgical approach to be able to treat that infected tooth or that rotting tooth or that dead tooth. So what my friend had asked me uh, via text was he saw this gentleman on Instagram talking about how root canals are a constant source of infection in your body. And about a year ago, Netflix had put out a special talking also about root canals and how dangerous they are for your body, how harmful it is to keep that foreign substance or trap that bacteria inside your tooth, inside your jawbone. Well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because in one sense, that's true. But in another sense, there's a little bit more that we need to understand when deciding whether that's the route we want to go to save your tooth or not. So go back to where I was talking about a tooth being like a peanut M&M. Now imagine if I ask you to surgically take out that peanut without disrupting too much of the structure of that M&M. How would we do it? We would make a little hole in that candy coating, make a little hole through that milk chocolate and access that peanut. We'd have to make it so that we don't compromise that structural integrity. So the hole would have to be relatively small, but relatively large enough to be able to extract that peanut. That's basically what the goal is in a root canal, is to extract that peanut. So the way that we do it, because that peanut's going to have legs that go down into your jawbone, we're going to use little hand files. We're going to use electric files to go down there and basically roto-rooter out the tooth. So we're stripping out that nerve, we're stripping out that blood vessel, and we're manually cleaning out an infection that's in that tooth. Then we go back in and we sterilize it with a couple different liquids. Again, I mentioned that sometimes we sterilize it with laser 
laser technology, but we sterilize as much as we can in that root canal. And that's all the way down in the center of the tooth. If your tooth has that infection, if you have that swelling in your jaw or in your lymph nodes, that usually means there's an abscess at the tip of those roots. So we actually go down with those hand valves and we popped that, we pop that cyst of infection. And that's how we manually clean that infection. And that chemical gets down there and it debrides it. So when we do a root canal, we're not able to strip out 100% of the uh, infection that's in there, the bacteria that naturally lives in that environment. So what we do is we use a combination of that mechanical debridement, we use that chemical debridement, and we bring those bacterial levels to a, down to an, a concentration where your body can actually have a chance to combat it. When you get a cut on your hand, you put ointment on it so that it doesn't get uh, a staph infection. So you put a Band-Aid to cover it so it doesn't get a secondary infection, right? You give your body a chance, you, you reduce the bacterial load on that cut, and then you give your body a chance to do the rest of its thing and heal it up the rest of the way. That's exactly the concept when we do a root canal. So we strip that bacteria out manually, chemically, and then we give your body a chance to do the rest. In some people, in most people, in most healthy people, that is enough to get your body to heal it the rest of the way, and you'll live a long, healthy, happy life with that root canal tooth. In a portion of the population that don't react well to that root canal, meaning you might have some other uh, inflammatory conditions that your body is busy working on and it's not able to concentrate on fixing this area. Maybe it's so hidden in your jawbone that your body can't quite access it enough to clear it out the whole way. Or um, maybe you're that anomaly. Anytime that we do anything in medicine, right, we treat the masses, we treat that 80%. You're always going to have 10% that don't respond as well. You're going to have 10% that respond too well. And it's always unknown about, it's called idiopathic. It's unknown why those extreme populations react the way that they do, right? But that's why we, we're not able to accommodate things like autoimmune conditions yet. Those are kind of people on those extremes where their body reacts differently than what that 80% of the normal population reacts to. So, but if you're in that healthy group of that population where you're not on a ton of medications, you're, you're overall healthy, you keep the inflammation down in your body, you can expect that root canal to work really well for you. Let's say that you had a root canal and you go back to your dentist and it's been five years since you've had that root canal or whatever amount of time. But that bone around that abscessed area has started to fill in, but not the whole way. Your dentist might suggest that they do a second surgery. So they send you to the endodontist, the root canal specialist, and we would suggest that you do something called an apico or an apicoectomy. So that means the endodontist would go in there and snip off that little residual infection that's kind of hidden in your jaw that maybe your body can't go in that deep and find it. It. For whatever reason, it's not recognizing it as a foreign material. So you go in there uh, via the side of your jaw and do a minor surgery where you snip off that root, clean out that infection, pack it in with bone grafting material, sew it back up, and that infection is gone. But I would still suggest to uh, try the root canal to see if your body can handle it. If it can't, there is always a second option to do with that second surgery. Now, if you're in that population that follows, you know, certain people on Instagram that go, no, never get a root canal because it's always gonna harbor a low grade infection in your body. And if that's, if that's the avenue you wanna prescribe to and you just wanna be one and done and never have to deal with that tooth again, then an implant is the way to go. You don't have to do a root canal. You can have that tooth extracted, have the grafting done like we've talked about in previous episodes, had that grafting done, and then have an implant put in that tooth's place. That is an option for you. But I'm here to tell you that all root canals are not bad. All root canals are not equal. You do want to be with somebody that is very familiar with the newest technology, that is able to mechanically and chemically debride your tooth and give you the best chance of being able to keep that tooth for a lifetime. I'm a firm believer that what God gave you to work with is better than what I can replace it with. So that's always going to be my first suggestion. It's more cost effective as well to try to save a, a tooth with a root canal than it is to automatically take it out and do an implant. There are some teeth that are beyond repair if you have a fracture in that root or the fracture is at a certain depth on that root, then it's not worth even trying that root canal. The prognosis is not good. So we want to only root canal teeth where it's going to be a favorable outcome or we're going to play those percentages, right? Because that's what the human body is. It's always playing the percentages and trying to constantly monitor and scan to bring you back to homeostasis. We use a root canal to give that tooth a boost to get you back to that homeostasis healthy level. If 
if you have questions about root canal, DM me, message me. I'm happy to answer. But um, basically, root canals still a good thing, not a bad thing. And in a lot of situations, it's really good. So ask your dental professional or DM me and I'll be happy to help you answer. Go. Hey guys, I need you to do me a favor. If you are enjoying the content of this podcast, then like, subscribe and follow us. It's free to do and share us with your friends. That helps us keep doing what we're doing. So if you like the dental content, send in your questions, like and subscribe.